WordPress version six. Yes, it's a thing and it's going to be pushed out to your website in under two weeks. And this release has over 500 enhancements. And in this video, we're going to go over each and every one of those 500 enhancements one by one. Nah, we ain't got time for all that, but we will go over some of the more notable changes and enhancements with this new version of WordPress that's going to get pushed out to millions of websites in just under two weeks. Now, of course, there's going to be some cool things in here, but don't get your hopes up too high. I know it's going from version five to version six, and normally that might mean big things, and it certainly doesn't mean big things in this case. It means a lot of little things, so let's go over them. So let's first start by creating a new page. I'll go to pages, add new, and give this one a name. This looks like a good enough title. I'll go ahead and save this. All right, let's get started. Let's first go over the cover block because now you can add your featured image to it. First, I'll set a featured image for this post. I'll go ahead and just choose any random image. It doesn't really matter. And then let's go ahead and add this cover block. There it is. We'll click on it. And there's a new option right here. And when you click on it, let's click on it right there. It's automatically going to choose the featured image. You can also enter a title, but I'll just click out of it to get to the settings for the cover block. You can see right here. I love this. It's been there a while. You get this focal point picker. So if your image has some extra space that goes beyond the size of the cover block, you can choose the focal point, which I love. And then you could click right here and add a quick title. Obviously, I can't see the title. So I'll go right here and I'll change the text color to white and there you have it. I don't see a ton of use for this block at this point in time, but this dynamically pulling in the featured image will be very, very good in the future when we're able to do more with the block builder. Next is the group block and there are some really cool enhancements in there that we're going to take a look at right now. And let me first add a little bit of content here. So I'm going to add a few headings. So I've added a heading and I added an avatar image right here. And if you look on the top right, we now have a few Flexbox controls. So mainly is going to be the usefulness would be the direction. So right here, you saw when I clicked on it, it's going to make the blocks act as a row. And then if I click on this, it's going to make them act as a column. And so when I go to the row options, we also can spread out whatever blocks through these different options right here. So I can have it be centered. I can have it be right aligned and I can have the space in between just like that. Now, while these are helpful, it doesn't go far enough because there aren't mobile responsive options for it. Let me show you what I mean. This is Spectra and they make a container block that has full Flexbox controls in it with mobile responsive options. Let me show you what they have. Now, some things might look a little different with Spectra. I have activated it. It adds this button right here. It adds these mobile responsive icons right here, as well as it makes the breadcrumbs down here on the bottom left stand out just a little bit more. So let's go ahead and add the container. So I'll go down here and let's go to the block inserter and here it is container. And then I can choose how I want it, but I'm going to just have a single container to show you the full flex box controls. There we go. And I'll add the same blocks to it. Now over here on the right, there is the flex properties and let's expose them. So right here I can choose the direction. And so this is to make it act as a row versus make it act as a column. We get additional alignment options. So we have this, which is similar to what we get in the group block. But then we also have the space around and the uh, other option here, I think space between or something like that. But let's go and have the same layout. Now, here's the thing. Many times you're going to want the direction reversed on a mobile device. So if I go to the mobile version of it right here, you see, I can't really do that at all with the group block. There's when I click in it right here, there is no options for that. So let let me get back in there. There we go. There's no mobile specific options. So if I wanted to do something different, you just really can't. 
However, when I'm in the container block inside of Spectra, I can go here to the flex properties and you can see the little tiny icon has changed to a mobile and I can do this right here, which is mobile reverse. So now I have the avatar and then the text. And then when I go back to the desktop, it goes back to the other way. So on a mobile, it would flip. And you have this with alternating sections. Now, unfortunately, even though the group block gives you these new flex controls, which are great, they just don't go quite far enough. Next, we have a couple new blocks. One of them is useful and the other two will be useful in the future. So first is the avatar block. I'm actually using that right here. And so you can display the logged in users avatar. So this is a really cool dynamic uh, thing that you can add to your website if you have a website where people are logging in. So I'll go ahead and click on the plus type avatar like this, choose it. And you can see on the right, I can choose the size. I can have it linked to the user's profile. I can have it be a fixed user if I wanted to. And then we have some really cool options here for the border and the border radius. This is actually, I believe, a new control in version six as well. So if I wanted this to be round, I can enter 90 and you can see now it is circle. And I can go instead and click right here and I can add a different dimension for each of these. So if I wanted it to be kind of a creative shape like that, or maybe like that. Actually, that does not look that good. Uh, it would probably look better if it was like 30 and then uh, 30 like that. There we go, we have a little bit of a creativeness there. Let me just go ahead and put five and five to soften that up. You can easily do it with the dimensions. What's really nice though is if you have a website where people log in, you can show this if you're making a customer dashboard for them or some some kind of thing where you would have their name and their image next to each other. The next two blocks, you probably won't be using them. Uh, so one is uh, comments. So this will pull in comments for say a blog post. The problem though is uh, I can't use it on a page and I don't have any comments here anyway. So let's go ahead and remove it, but it's nice that that's there. I think it'll be more useful in the future. We also have a read more option and you might say, uh, let's see, let me actually pull it in. You might say, what in the heck is a read more option going to be there for? This will be good if you're using the query loop builder that also ships with WordPress. I don't use it just yet. And I think when more people start to use it, this read more will be even more useful. But right now I really don't see much of a use for it. Next, we're going to take a look at some improvements to the list view inside of the block editor. And for this, I'm going to finish building out this layout. I've got a two column layout here. And in here, I'm going to put a checkout form. Now this checkout form, is from Surecart, which is a brand new e-commerce platform for WordPress. And so I'll create a new form and let's give it a name. And then I'll click on next. And here I can choose a form layout. I'll choose this. I'll click on next. Let me add one of the products or actually, why don't I go ahead and add multiple products like this? Uh, there we go. And customer, blah, blah, blah. This is good. I'll click on create and then boom, I have a beautiful checkout form right here. Actually, I think I chose the wrong one. Let me add something really cool called the price selector. And this is actually where I wanted to choose those various products. There we go. One, two and three. And there we go. Now I've got my checkout form actually here. Let's go ahead and delete that. There we go. This is looking good. So now that I have a bunch of stuff here, I can click on the list of you. And if you notice, everything is immediately going to start out collapsed. If you were using the list of you before on a full page, before everything was expanded out and it looked a little messy and kind of hard to find what you were looking for. But now everything starts out collapsed. And now I've got my columns collapsed right here. We can see the avatar heading and paragraph. And right here we can see my checkout form. And here's everything that makes up this checkout form. So that's improvement number one to the list view. Now the second improvement to the list view is block locking. So if I click on a block 
I can click the three dots right here. And then there's this option right here that says lock. Now this option is also gonna be found in a block. So if I click on this block and click on the three dots, there it is. Now, when I choose the lock option, it gives me two things that I can lock if I chose. I can disable movement that's moving it around and I can prevent it from being removed. So I can check this box, click on apply, and now the block is locked. And you can see there is a padlock here in the list view to let you know that that particular block happens to be locked. So I no longer can move it. If I wanted to say move this up out of the columns and containers, can't do it. If I wanted to click on the three dots and remove it, I can't do it, it's locked. Now I do think this is a really neat feature. It doesn't quite accomplish what I think would be really neat for it to accomplish. And that would be if you were building sites and giving them off to a client, you would also want to lock down the style settings and just have it be where all they can do is click on the text and change it. You it, it, So it's more than rearranging that you would want to lock out from a client. And so I wish they took it that far, but you know, it is what it is. I think if I was to have built a feature, I would have hidden uh, or locked the block settings right here because this is pretty much the style settings. I would have locked this as well, but as you can see, uh, it's not locked, right? I can go here and change the style and, and pretty much do some damage to the layout just by tweaking the style to something that doesn't look so good. So, so far, I really don't know the usefulness of this feature, but I think it's a good start. And the third improvement to the list view is you can now select more than one block and you can move them together. So for example, in my payment form, I've got the payment box right here and I can hold down the shift key and click on totals and you saw what happens. Now they're both selected together. So I have my summary right here as well as the payment box and I can drag and drop and move this. So if I wanted to move this up above the name, I just did that and now the name's down there. We probably don't want that. So I'll move it back. Um, and you can also use the up and down arrows right here in order to move it when you've selected more than one item. That's actually a very useful feature if you ask me. Next, we will show you this thing where you can select multiple bits of text. So if I wanted to select, actually, let me rephrase that, multiple bits of text in multiple blocks that might be above or below each other. So if I wanted to highlight this and just kind of like drag it, you see now I'm literally able to select some of this along with this. And believe it or not, you couldn't do that before, uh, but you can do it now. So this is the multi-select text. Another nice improvement when you click on a block that has a color option. So they all like, for example, this, it has a text and a background color option. When you click on it, you get this nice pop out panel. I actually like this a lot. It seems very refined and I like that I can just choose the color right here. So I really like the polish that I'm seeing there when you are interacting with the controls. I love the new color picker and I just like some of the finishness that is starting to appear in these blocks as you're trying to adjust things. Of course, they don't look like anything you've seen before, so it does take a little getting used to, but they do look quite nice. Here's something else that was added. Let me add the buttons block. There it is, buttons, and I can say button one, like this one, and I can go over here and change some properties. So let's um, go ahead and make the rounded color there. Let's make it like a red background. I don't know, that looks actually pretty horrible. Let's do something like that, and that looks pretty bad as well. So what's interesting is when you click in here, you can add another button by just clicking on this little plus. And when you do that, if you noticed, it retained the style. Now, I 
I think this is neat. However, I don't find it useful because usually if I'm going to have side by side buttons, the second button I would have looked different. So, um, but this is a new thing that we get as well. Now, the next improvement is if your patterns, that's these thingamabobs right here. When I expand the block inserter, these patterns, they have names. And if you know those names, you can insert those patterns directly here in the canvas. So when I click on the plus, let me actually just start typing pattern. You can see I entered the first two letters and these are pulling up with those keywords. So there you can enter these on the fly. You don't necessarily have to go here, click on plus, click on patterns, and then search it on out. It is there for you. Now the next bit of improvements have to do with full site editing, which came out just a few months back when the last version of WordPress came out. There's some improvements that are there. This is only available though, if you're using a full site editing theme and most people aren't using full site editing themes. There's too many uh, cons versus pros to using it, but in the future, it'll be quite nice. So everything I had just showed you, I was using the Astro theme, which has fantastic block builder options and integrations and it just works beautifully with it, uh, but it doesn't have full site editing yet. I do know that they're working on this, so it'll probably be the first hybrid theme out there. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and activate the 2022 theme, and there it is. And when you do that, you can see underneath appearance, we have this option here for editor. So I'm going to click on that, and you are immediately taken to this interface. Now, the first thing is something new called the style switcher. So a full site editing theme can have multiple styles with it and you can go right here and you'll see them and you could switch to the various styles. You can create your own styles as a matter of fact. So we've got a few styles here to switch to these various styles. So there's this style switcher, which is actually kind of clever because the single theme can now look different ways and you could switch between them very easily. Now, if you were someone that wanted to create your own styles, you can easily export them into a single file. So you can see when I click on the three dots here on the very top right, we have various options and here it is right there. It's export. Download your theme with updated templates and styles. You can just boom, download the whole thing into a single file. So now to get out of this interface right here, I'm going to click on the WordPress logo on the top left and then I'm going to click right here where it says templates because there are additional template options that you can build and design. So when I go over here in the top right, click on add new, we can see some new options. More specifically, we have the tag page right here in the taxonomy page. So a taxonomy page would be your archive pages for your website. So if you have a category and you wanted to create a design just for that category, you can do that. You just click right here and you're off to the races. Now I'll be the first to self admit that if you saw my face in the camera right now, it's going to look like a deer in the headlights. And that's because I'm not yet getting jiggy with the full site editing experience. It's a little bit too much for me at this stage, but once they figure out how to make it easier and more intuitive, I'm sure I'll be all over it. Now, as I said in the beginning of the video that there's over 500 enhancements and there's no way that I would put you through me going over each and every one of them. So I chose the ones that I thought were the most notable, but there's a lot more to this update and you're definitely going to want to check out this about page on your website to see all the options available. A couple new notable things that I didn't mention. If you're using the gallery block to have a photo gallery, there's now gap options. That's the spacing between each of those images in the grid. And there's also enhanced border controls that you can use in the boxes and the blo uh, blocks that offer those as options. And you can see right here, there's also some parameters added to the query block. Earlier in the video, I mentioned SureCart. It's a brand
brand new e-commerce platform for WordPress. It's done the WordPress way. It's 100% free. It's got some very powerful features. I know you'll love it. And here is a video with more information on this brand new, exciting e-commerce platform. Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.